Let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, as we come before you this morning, we want to say how thankful, how grateful we are for your goodness to us. In Christ alone, our hope is found. Lord, we're so thankful for each one that has gathered here this morning. We're thankful for the fact that um, if we know Christ is our Savior, Father, uh, we have been adopted into the family of God. We rejoice in that truth. Lord, as we come this morning, Lord, we uh, think of those who um, are not able to be with us this morning. We certainly think of, of uh, Jerry and Sharon Preston, Father. We continue to ask that you administer to them your grace. Uh, we're thankful that your grace is sufficient. And grace upon grace, you've promised us. And so, Lord, would you overwhelm them today with your grace as he is suffering and struggling through that cancer. Lord, we think of um, Kevin Kleinfeld. We thank you for um, just uh, your protection, uh, Lord, as he was in a car accident not too many weeks ago. And we pray for continued strength for him and, and Lord, for the headaches that he's been having, that you would continue to strengthen him. <clears throat> we thank you for his son that was uh, not seriously injured, and we pray for continued strength for him. We thank of Robbie, his other son. Father, we ask for healing after surgery and thank you for uh, the good healing we have seen there. We pray for Mary Jo. We ask that you continue to heal her. Thank you that she's doing better, Father. We thank of Julie Trowbridge, Lord, as, Lord, she's had many, uh, many health needs. And, Lord, we just ask for strength for her. And that you'd encourage her, that you would just, um, again, minister your grace to her in a special way. We think of our college students this morning, Emily and, and Amy and Alyssa. <clears throat> Father, we ask that you would continue to uh, minister to them and through them. We pray that um, they would sense our prayers. Lord, most importantly, we pray that they would sense your presence. And God, we ask that you would just continue to work in their lives while they're away from home. Lord, we ask for our service this morning, Lord. It's truly our desire this morning as we gather to lift you up, to glorify you um, as we worship you in giving, in singing. Lord, as we hear about this wonderful ministry opportunity, uh, Lord, we just ask that you would be with Josh and give him the words to, to share with us this morning. Minister to our hearts. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming this morning. It looks like you were able to get... Uh, all the snow uh, shoveled away, and and uh, I'm excited about that. I know we had around 10 inches of snow where we were, and I think probably pretty much everybody got about 8 to 10. Um, so thank you for coming. And uh, how many are snowblowers? You got snowblower at home, and uh, yeah, um, shovelers. A few of you, old timers. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I I've got a shovel, but I. Uh, use a blade, one of those long, uh, it's about four feet wide, I think, um, pusher kind of thing. Oh my goodness, that, that's, that's the greatest invention since, I don't know. But uh, we have a big, long driveway, and so that made it so much easier. But I have to do like every three, four inches as it comes, and I'd come out about two hours later, and it was like another four inches as Oh, watching my wife out there do that was just, it was difficult to watch, but um, <laughs> hey, we're glad you're here this morning, and um, thank you for coming. I mean that. It's uh, always um, a challenge to get up on a Sunday morning, but especially when you have that much snow, it's a lot easier just to uh, roll over and go back to bed. So thank you for joining us. We're excited to have Josh Anderson, one of our own, I guess we could say, with us this morning. And uh, he's uh, not a stranger to many of you. Uh, Josh is uh, married to Tori, and uh, they have three children, Ben, who is four, Luke, who is three, and then Maeve? Maeve, Maeve got it, all right, uh, who is one. And uh, they could not be here this morning because they have other responsibilities. And, uh, but uh, he uh, is going to be sharing his ministry with us this morning. Uh, we met uh, several weeks ago now. And uh, he shared uh, the ministry 
Uh, they're a fellowship of Christian athletes. How many have heard of that ministry before? Uh, probably many of you have. Um, I've, I shared this with Josh. I've run into a number of people who um, were saved through that ministry, who um, on campuses, universities and things were, um, you know, um, challenged to come to the Bible study on campus. And they came and as a result, trusted Christ as their Savior. They're doing an amazing job. Uh, ben Peterson, my uh, coach uh, in, in high school and college, uh, gold and silver Olympian, um, he wanted to be here this morning and was excited to hear from Josh. And then he uh, contacted me yesterday and said that he had to uh, speak, not had to, he was excited. He's speaking to a bunch of Pewaukee uh, wrestlers this morning. And uh, so be uh, in prayer that God will use him this morning. But um, we're excited to have him here. He graduated uh, from the uh, CBCS in 2002, and so we're glad to have him here. Um, at the end of the service, we'll take up a love offering, and so while I make announcements at the end, I'll have the uh, deacons just uh, walk through and, and uh, stand there until you put something in, and no, not really. Uh, if you came prepared to give, uh, great. If you forgot and would like to give at a later time, uh, you certainly can just make out a check uh, to uh, FCA, and uh, they'll make sure, and in the memo, just put Josh Anderson, they'll make sure that that goes towards his ministry. This morning, our one another's, as we share one pretty much every Sunday, um, I, God has really made our focus on him, and then the second greatest command of others, right? And so, in 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship, koinonia, we have communion, partnership. Um, we have in common. Uh, you, you know, fellowships, we typically think of what? Food. Amen. Good old Baptist, you know, fellowship e equates food. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? But uh, whether you have food or not, um, that fellowship that we have, that communion that we have with one another, because of Christ, because of the gospel, because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, those who have placed their faith and trust in him, we have a commonality now because of the Holy Spirit that indwells each one of us, right? And uh, we can have a lot of things in common with our coworkers at work and, and uh, people in our, in our neighborhood, perhaps, and, um, and those kind of things. But what really pulls us together is Christ. And um, what a wonderful thing. Uh, and so if we walk in that light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship. Um, and the blood of Jesus, the, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Um, he bought us and he brought us into the family of God. And what a wonderful fellowship that we can have with one another. As part of the body of Christ, because of that fellowship with each other, listen to what Paul says as he writes to Christians in Philippi. In Philippians 1, I thank my God in all remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership. Again, that same word, koinonia, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And so whenever there is not uh, fellowship with a brother or sister in Christ, um, it's because either one or both are not walking in that light, walking in the spirit. And so let me encourage you to uh, have fellowship with one another, to um, talk of Christ when you come together. I, my heart was so encouraged, um, I just kind of skipped all the way back to Milwaukee area. Uh, yesterday after our men's Bible study, uh, we had nine or ten, I think it was, and uh, just a, a sweet time of fellowship and studying God's word together. And uh, yes, we had food as well, uh, but just that fellowship that we can have. And um, we want to do more and more of that, to see us gathering together um, as groups within the body of Christ, um, fellowship and ministering together. Psalm 69 verse 30 says this, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Um, I think as you listen and look at these words, you'll hear and see a lot of the gospel, um, that Christ lived a perfect life, 
He gave his life as an offering for us, sacrificing himself. No one killed Jesus. He uh, gave himself for us. And, um, but he didn't stay in the grave. Uh, three days later, he rose again. And uh, we're thankful for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen, amen. What a wonderful truth. You know, I don't know what you're going through this morning, uh, but I can tell you this, uh, God's got it. It doesn't surprise him. He's allowed whatever you're going through this morning, and uh, I know that he's going to use whatever you're going through to glorify himself, and in some way to conform you to Christ and bring you uh, to that place uh, so that when we see him face to face, um, maybe we won't be so um, surprised, right? <laughs> um, I think that uh, we have a long ways to go in our sanctification, don't we? But uh, our goal is to be more and more like Jesus every day. And one day he will come again. Whatever you're going through, uh, just always remember that. Christ could come back today. Amen. Well, this morning, I am uh, excited to have uh, Josh come, and I've asked him to come and just share his heart about the ministry, share whatever uh, he'd like this morning, so I hope that uh, it'll be a blessing to you as you learn a little bit more about this ministry. Josh, you come, brother. Very good singing. This was, a. Uh, this was, uh, we could have just kept going. I could have just sat there. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to open in prayer, and, uh, and we'll get started. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for getting, uh, getting us here um, in your sovereignty. We're here. We're safe. Uh, we're together. We're worshiping you. We're uh, praising you. Um, thank you for sending your son um, to save us on this uh, rescue mission that he was on. Thank you for the, the ministry of uh, FCA. The opportunity is to glorify you in sharing what you're doing and uh, through the ministry. And I pray that uh, tidbits are taken and, and used in individuals' lives. And um, we thank you for this time. We praise you. It's in your uh, son's name we pray. Amen. All right. It's been a long, long time since I was up here. Um, it's so great to see um, a lot of familiar faces, some who are not uh, familiar. Um, my name is Josh Anderson, as that was mentioned. My father, Father Paul Anderson, if you will raise, many probably know. Um, my dad is, is Paul, my mother uh, was Joy. Uh, I grew up here, uh, was baptized uh, back here uh, by Pastor Lowry, uh, praise the Lord, and um, graduated from the school that we had. Um, and uh, well, I'll just fast, you know, fast forward a bunch of stuff, and here I am. Uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to, to be uh, back up here. I was thinking about, um, well, it's through a chain of thoughts. We are um, uh, at uh, FCA. Our, our 2023 um, theme is greater in our, our uh, Scripture, John 3. Uh, 30, I was thinking of back in at our, our ACE school, we would go to ACE convention, right, and um, I joined uh, the uh, preaching, uh, I'm not setting an expectation here, This, is, uh, but I joined the preaching competition and uh, and placed in that, and grandpa, my grandpa, who uh, has recently passed, wrote me a, uh, a little kind of blurb in the front of a Bible in reference John 3, 30, um, and, uh, but anyway, how that ties in is I think that was the last time I was up here uh, with a microphone was, uh, and I don't know what I would have said, but I was up here as a teenager saying something. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, it I was encouraged by how many people knew of FCA. That's exciting. Um, FCA has been around since the 50s, and it's, it's, it's fairly well known, but um, that, was, that was an encouragement to me just as the, uh, the incoming state leader to see uh, the visibility within kind of this uh, sample of people, uh, the visibility of our ministry. Um, my my uh, my hope here. I'm gonna I'm gonna run through. I don't always use slides. I'm gonna use some slides today. I'm not quite ready uh, for them yet, Mr. Jop. I've got a. I put my wife's birthday as my login on my tablet just to keep that fresh in my mind. So I had to work through that uh, obstacle first there. Um, my, my hope is to, um, in sharing the ministry, to also, um, the gospel was already briefly presented this morning. I want to make, I want to, I want to share the gospel, um, and what, what the gospel is 
and how we have some ways within FCA as we work a lot with teenagers, some, some ways we give to remember what the gospel is so that a teenager and a student, a middle schooler, a high schooler, a college student is, um, feels in what they know, they know um, these, these few bullet points and they know in God's word where they would go from there uh, to share the gospel with uh, their friends. I, I hope to talk a little bit on discipleship our ministry focuses greatly on discipleship, and that's a call that I think we all have through the Great Commission. Um, and, uh, and, and ultimately, uh, more than anything, I, I just hope to, um, uh, I say, bring glory to God in sharing about our ministry. Um, I hope to um, make much of, of Jesus through this. And I, I, I use no slides more than slides lately, and that's because when I get excited about something, I just go. And so I actually come up here, and honestly, I'm, I'm kind of doing a hybrid. I'm kind of, I'm kind of going to just go, and think, and and, and the Holy Spirit will, will, um, will Lord willing, keep me uh, on track to an extent. But I, I am going to use some slides. One of them is to show my family, um, and we'll get to it. Not, not quite yet, but the. Um, my family, my wife, and then our three kids that we have were uh, members of, across town at a, a church called Christ Fellowship. Um, and my wife is, uh, she's, she's solo right now as a Sunday school teacher right now. She's, she would end in class by now, but uh, she was solo, didn't have coverage for it. Um, and ultimately, it was best for the day if she just uh, plugged away. And I think she'll join uh, me for lunch uh, later in the day here. Um, so who I am, so I've already mentioned that. I grew up around here. I've been using how, I, how, how kind of my history to jump forward ties into how in the world now is FCA part. Because FCA, just with the, the quantity of schools, are primarily... You know, if you take the list of schools in our, you know, in our state or in our country, there's more public schools than there are um, Christian schools. And, and by and large, FCA is especially in public schools. I was a Christian school kid. I didn't have FCA in my, um, in my, you know, in my upbringing. But then where I got tied into FCA was that um, I was a public school uh, baseball coach, a, a head baseball coach at a public school, and it was a strategic. Um, a strategic thing where my family, we invested. Um, if you've seen a, a high school and above, a, a head coach, like they're just, that's a year round responsibility that a coach has. And so um, it's an investment for the whole family to, to pour in as far as the time and efforts behind that. Um, but it was a strategic move all along to be in the community, in those relationships. It's at a local school, so I won't even list some of the, the specifics of things that you run into with students on your team when you become a, 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 a school coach. It doesn't even have to be a, a public school coach, but when you become a coach of kids and the families that then you enter through that relationship that you have with 15 and 20 kids at a time, um, there's this incredible need and pain and darkness and joy and all these things that are wrapped up into that uh, role of being a coach and, and, and seeing these lives and where they're at and, and uh, in so many cases their need for Jesus Christ. And so that was, I was involved uh, as a coach and that led to FCA. FCA does a huge investment in coaches to walk alongside of them um, evangelizing and discipling and so FCA became a part of my life uh, in being a coach. And so I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new as an FCA person. My, uh, our, our, my regional vice president who I report to as the uh, incoming state leader, he said, you know, for not having a lot of uh, background specifically in FCA, you have uh, you know great clarity to what we're here for. Well, the answer to to why I can say that, and I don't say that in a boastful way, is because it's simple. What we're here for is evangelism and discipleship using the vehicle of sport. Um, and so that's uh, my family. We um, I, I want to define here before we even probably do the first slide, and then we'll and then once we're in slides, we'll. Um, we'll be moving quick here, but I, I hope to define first of uh, uh, three things as I'm going to say these words, and I've already said some of them um, a couple of times. I want to make sure that we're, we have clarity on what the, each one of these are. Um, I want to define quick gospel and disciple and, and great commission. Um, so uh, gospel... Um, just to run through, we, we all, I'll pull out, we call this the four, and that's the gospel, very, very concisely what I mentioned. Uh, we help kids uh, to know, but the gospel, so we have, um, I know that you, you hear this in your teaching week to week, so the gospel is um, God created the world. Um, he gave a command, uh, don't eat. Uh, Adam and Eve, what did they do? They ate. 
uh, they create, they brought sin and sin and death entered the world and sin and death entering the world. Um, from there forward, uh, we're born into this world as a sin nature. We're, um, we're, we're, we, we, we come out as a, as a, as a, a, a parent of little kids. I see this firsthand. They, they come out and they're, they're little sinners right off the bat. It's a reality. I think parents get to like understand the, the truth of scripture that like this little, like less than one year old has like has a temper, has a mouth, even though they can't talk and all this stuff. And so we, we, um, we have this sin nature. Um, and, um, and, uh, but, uh, but God, and we'll, we'll go to Ephesians 2 to, to make me more concise with this, but God, he sent his son, um, his son uh, came, and um, he came through a virgin, a uh, virgin birth of Mary, that matters, because he came, and where we come through our natural lineage, and we're born into sin, he came through the virgin Mary, and so he wasn't born into sin, and he lived this sinless life that we, uh, that we can't live, and he went all the way on this rescue mission to the point of going to the cross where our sin had been imputed to him, and he died the death that we were able to then take on his righteousness is imputed to us, and as we come to faith in Christ, we uh, are able to have his righteousness and be saved, and as we said, be sanctified, be living, being more and more conformed to the image of Christ um, as the Holy Spirit works in us and God's word um, is teaching us and we're in a community of believers and people investing and walking alongside of each other and we're, uh, praise God, we're growing. And, and, and that, 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 that power that there is over sin, we've, the, the, the us, Jesus dying and, 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 and living that life we couldn't live to die that death we couldn't live, we've, we've now got... Um, the uh, there's there the penalty of sin um, was covered. There, we have po- we have we have power over sin, and as as we go forward, and and there will be the um, the day where we all uh, pass away, or Jesus returns, where we'll ultimately be glorified, and we'll we won't have sin uh, surrounding us anymore. Praise God! And so that's when I say the gospel, um, that's that's essentially what I mean. Um, when I say disciple, much shorter is a disciple. Um, and this is this is the core of our ministry. When I say disciple, this is someone who um, who is growing in the relationship with Jesus Christ in His church. Um, so, a disciple maker is someone who is uh, walking alongside of people who are growing in the relationship with Jesus Christ in His church. Something that I think we're all uh, called to. Uh, the Great Commission. This is this is. I'll just read this. Matthew twenty eight sixteen to twenty. Um, now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Um, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's so we've got evangelism, uh, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. That's training, discipleship going on. Um, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Uh, praise God. That's, uh, that's Matthew 28, 16 to 20 for reference. And so now as I go forward and I kind of reference those three things, gospel and discipleship or disciple, um, and when I reference Great Commission um, as, as when I get rolling, I say all three of those things. Those are what I'm referring to. Um, I would like to, to reference, I'll, I'll, I'll say my FCA story where I, I say some people come to FCA, there's so, there's so many incredible stories. As, as Pastor mentioned, there's, there's so many people, a sidewall reference, there's so many people that have come to Christ um, over the years and to current day right now um, who are coming to Christ through um, the, this vehicle of sport and FCA being in these schools um, and reaching the next generation there. Um, praise the Lord. There are, um, uh, there are, um, where was I going with that? There is, um, my, my FCA story is basically that I'm at a conference, or conferences, plural, um, at the state level, the national level as a coach, and I'm sitting. I go, and when any time there's free food involved, I'm I'm there. And so, um, and so when I'm at a like a Wisconsin Baseball Coaches Association, American Baseball Coaches Association, um, and there's there throughout the the course of the weekend or week that these conferences go on, FCA for the major sports will invest in having a um, a coaches breakfast. 
invite, there will be hundreds of you know, people at the conference or thousands of people in the case of the National, and they'll invite anybody who will come um, to come enjoy a free breakfast and hear from someone about how Jesus Christ changed their life and from someone else who's going to bring uh, a challenge from God's word or teaching from God's word. And So I would go to these because naturally I would love to be, in this case I'm sitting with coaches who I'm investing in uh, as a believer and walking alongside of or evangelizing and so on. And so I want to be in this spot. So I'm at these um, conventions, at these breakfasts, and, and I'm, I'm just continuously um, drawn to the clarity of the gospel, the gospel that's being presented in these. And so a lot of times a, a big organization maybe you would think, because um, you would think of maybe some drifting that may happen from the clarity of what they're there for. Maybe sin isn't mentioned clearly um, as, as something that... Um, uh, that is uh, that is our problem, um, and it may become just just maybe a, a kind of drifted away from that. I was so uh, caught by, and I, I wear I got this uh, bracelet before I was an FCA staffer, um, and I'll I'll run through this. It's a heart. The heart means God loves you. The division sign means sin separates you. The cross means Jesus rescues you, and the and the question mark means uh, will you trust Jesus? And every time I was at something for FCA, I was hearing, I was hearing whether it was what was being expounded upon for the whole talk, or whether it was themed throughout the talk and then clearly stated in the end. But I continuously heard those the four points, and I was drawn to that. And so um, I hope to. I'm a middle school Sunday school teacher. Uh, by you know by what I do in the local church and so we we memorize stuff and every week I throw something out there it's it's always kind of dictated within the uh, the lesson plan and I throw something out there and we repeat it and we repeat it about eight times as we go about the day um, sometimes I forget on some steps and then we get to the end and we make sure that everybody knows it and so um, when I'm in a school now and I'm doing uh, doing talks there I will I will reference this and we'll practice this and practice this so let's do it today I'm going to talk for just a second the four so God loves you can everybody say God loves you God loves you God loves you. Um, a verse for that to remember, there's so many. There's so many that, that we can, that we can um, think of with this. But John 3.16, most, most, probably most common memorized verse in the Bible. We, we have right there that there's so much, there's so much depth and beauty and just, just, just incredible when we think of, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Like, that whoever believe, and then and then we proceed for for whoever believes in him uh, should not perish but have eternal life. For he loved the world so much that he sent his only son on that rescue mission that we just said the gospel. Uh, the second one, sin separates you. Can we say that sin? Okay, there's uh, these are common ones again. You can go in less common ways, but I think you you all probably already know the verses with this. And so when we plug in these little things to remember, this is this is powerful. Romans uh, three twenty three would be the heart of it. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm going to read all the way to twenty six. This is this is this is just such a great passage, and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received. By faith, this was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that we, so that he might be the be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Um, the other one to remember: so Romans three twenty three, Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in uh, Jesus Christ our Lord. There's. Um, uh, John MacArthur said in, in a, a book, he, older book, he's got uh, called the Gospel According to Jesus. He said it's impossible to suggest uh, that a person can encounter the Holy God of Scripture and be saved without also coming to grips with the heinousness uh, of his own sin and consequently longing to turn from it. Um, so we've got what's the first one? God, God loves you. Sin, sin separates you. Okay, Jesus rescues you. Whew. All right, let's go. Uh, the most common one, if we want to just stick to what you're going to know, uh, you may know all of these, but Romans 5, 8, okay? I'm going to read uh, 6 to 11. For while we, were still, uh, while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would, die, would, he, would dare even to die. 
But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. It's, uh, this quote is, this, this quote just comes to mind. It's, it's kind of a, uh, A.W. Tozer, uh, so many, so many, um, uh, bits of, of, of kind of, uh, gold for our walk from, um, from him. He said, the only sin Jesus had, the only sin Jesus had was mine, Luther's and yours, and the only righteousness we can ever have, uh, is his, um, I will, uh, I'll say real quick, the fourth one, will you trust Jesus? Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's review. So God loves you. Sin? Okay. Jesus? Will you trust Jesus? Okay, I just said that the first time. Um, there is, we jumped around with different, different spots, but I'm going to share here one spot you could go when sharing um, that will have that encapsulated, I believe. So Ephesians 2, if you want to turn there, Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start right away because it's longer. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. So we got the sins part right there if you're, if you're uh, with a friend. So dead in your trespasses and sins, which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love, so we got the love right there, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. We've got the Christ of the four there. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. That's kind of our fourth will you trust. And, and this is not our own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before him that we should walk in them. That's a, that had all four there. That's, that's fantastic. If you've got one spot, if you can remember, kids, if you've got one spot and you can remember the four, God loves you, sin separates you, Jesus rescues you, will you trust Jesus? If you can uh, go to Ephesians 2, 1 to 10, um, you could walk a friend right through that. Um, Mr. Joppa, could you uh, possibly please fire up the, the slides and I'll, I'll uh, be a little bit more on point to specifically FCA here, but I, I wanted to be clear here as I go forward and what um, what I'm referencing when I say the three things and then also when I reference the four. Um, so our ministry, as, as uh, what we're doing, um, as was said, is we are, um, we are using sport um, and, and we're using sport to enter places that are difficult to enter. So you think of right now, um, it, it would be very difficult, I would suspect, um, if you're to call up the, the local, if you're to call up Sun Prairie West and say, um, hi, Sun Prairie West, you know, administration, I'm from the local church and I'm hoping to have a Bible study in room 101, you know, at four o'clock. It might happen. There's a whole lot of spots I can nearly guarantee it, it wouldn't happen, probably for sure on the first try. Um, but um, sports, right or wrong, in a lot of cases, admittedly wrong, um, has this spot, this pedestal. It's, but, but it's also, in a, in a healthy way, sports are, when we talk about our communities, which is when we're talking about our schools, our schools, our communities, our university campuses, sports are just uh, intertwined with the fabric of them. And so when you have, um, you know, when you have that 
inroad through, as we know, about 18,000 coaches by name. Um, we know their names in our state. Um, when you think of everything from Luke Fickle, the you know, head coach of the Badgers, down to you know, the assistant you know, JV shot put instructor at the local high school and everything in between, there's a whole city of people um, that, are, um, that are coaches alone. Um, and so we have, we're known um, to an extent, and so we use that inroad to enter places um, that are difficult to enter. But there's also the reality that the sport is, allows an opportunity and a tool um, to enter people's lives. Um, to have the attention. So I mentioned my history as a coach that's, that's, entering, that's entering their lives as the coaching role, but there's also even just the, 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 the simple attention and, commu and communication aspect of as my boss had shared before, he's about 6'11", he's almost seven foot tall, and you know, he shared with me that you know, if, when, he's, when he's amongst a group of, of teens and he doesn't have a basketball under his armpit, um, you know, the, the attention looks you know, like this, and, and it, you know, might not be eyes on him, but when, you know, just because it's a tool, then the basketball is under the armpit, the, um, there's that attention there, because there's that common bond that is there just right off the bat with those teens through the game that they're, you know, there for practice for or whatever, and so we use that tool um, of sport for evangelism and discipleship and we love coaches and we love athletes so it's not like we um, just have this front up there that we're like using this tool and then like when it comes down to it like it's really it's really just a tool like we we think that coaches are strategically positioned to be if they come to Christ or know Christ and we've connected with them they're strategically positioned to be so impactful in the lives of their athletes um, and so we do see that. So that, that is a real love for them, but it's also it's very much a strategic um, angle to take to enter places in people's lives um, through sport. Um, and and uh, we have um, we have a um, you could you could go ahead and uh, change, Mr. Jeff. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Um, so our mission here this is an act, this is a huddle happening. So that's, this would be a, a Bible study group. Um, that would be happening. These are all real photos. But our mission, to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. Um, our vision, um, which, which, which goes along with that. So, that, so as I say, that's, that's, that's great commission right there. That's, that's great commission with, some, with a, a sports vehicle element to it. Um, similarly, vision, it's not a separate slide, so I don't click so fast, but um, is to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. That's, that's a, that, is a, that is another package of, of that is great commission using this vehicle that we have. We have a there's a there's a, a an important part here. I saw this vintage video, this vintage FCA video um, that I was watching once, and it was talking about the big win, um, and it, it's still so relevant when I was watching it. Was the when you talk about uh, an FCA huddle, and and a huddle is so we have we have different. Um, uh, avenues for ministry where it'll, some stuff is one-on-ones, like a one-on-one -on -one discipleship with a coach where we're regularly, our staff is regularly in their office. Um, we have uh, huddles, which is our sports team name for a Bible study group. Those are varying sizes. As you can see, that's a, you know, six, seven people. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's 10. It, that varies, but that's called a huddle. And then we have events, and events are um, Coaches retreat, weekend retreats, um, sports camps that kids go to and is a big part of our ministry, um, fields of faith, these big one-time evangelism um, uh, events that happen on football fields, and these th that would be in our events, so one-on-ones, huddles, and, and events would be... Um, uh, the different kind of ministry uh, types that you would that you would see, but we have um, this big win is that when it's when we're talking about a huddle, anybody can go to that, and so um, so actually the marching band is like a really common like attendees of of FCA huddles, and so the big win is that um, strategically enter a school through a coach's relationship. Um, the, 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 the coach, um, whether they're a believer or they come to Christ through being ministered to, praise God, um, they become this catalyst where we're now ministry is in the school. They become a mobilized volunteer and huddles are happening. Um, well, that huddle then can stem into beyond just the, the coaches and athletes in that school, but can then span school wide as the marching band and the, and, and just random people come because the pizza smells good or whatever it is. And now we have this 
whole, you know, community-wide impact that stems from that strategic entry through so often what is that coach. And so um, if you could, um, Ms., uh, Mr. Joppa, change one slide. Um, so to and through the coach, um, that's, our, that's our strategy. And I mention that because you can't, just like I say, you might have a hard time with a Bible study uh, just, just to, as, a, as a church to call up and say, can I have a Bible study? Um, but if you will, um, if you will, uh, you know, through what is a strategic entry point, um, but also um, you can't typically probably if you want to stay in, you know, good graces with law enforcement and stuff, you can't call usually probably the school and be like, hey, um, I'm Josh. I was hoping to talk to somebody in like ninth grade science class, like right now, if anybody's available, like if you're not related to them and you do that too many times, that's probably not like going to go over well, right? You can envision this. And so that's, that's, that's where to and through the coach, that becomes an accessible person where we know about 18,000 by name within our state, but we have relationships with many of them to where that's an accessible person. It's an adult to adult relationship that we can, we can't show up at the doorstep of the school and expect to see that ninth grader in science class, but we can show up to the doorstep of the school and expect to see the football coach who we know and knows we're coming and so on and so forth. So that's, um, that's, where, that's where that strategy is. If you could uh, please change one more. Um, E3, this is, uh, this is a great, this is, our, this is our method for evangelism and discipleship. And if, I, won't, I won't do the, the Sunday school repeating of this where you, you uh, y'all would be expected to say it out loud, but this this would be, I, I pray, something that, that you could latch on to that would be helpful in as you go in your own life fulfilling the Great Commission, which we're called to, that this would be an easy way for you to remember. And coaches love to use acronyms and repeating letters and things like that. And so this is engage, equip, empower. Um, engage, that is where we we know these coaches by name. We've 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 come across them just through public info. We've come across them at coaches associations. We know who these people are. Um, that's where our staff, which is stationed across the state, um, continuously pursues them and pursues relationship with them. As Paul spoke of in First Thessalonians, like he came not just not just, he came to do life with them and, and to share the gospel. So we're 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 in that coach's office on a regular basis, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And, um, and that is someone being engaged for, for um, the root of that, kind of where that word comes from, First uh, Thessalonians 2, 8. So uh, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves because you had become very dear to us. Um, equip, that's where somebody has come to Christ. We've come across someone who... Um, who was a believer, uh, praise God, and we, we have connected with that person, we've, we've, we've engaged with that person, and we found that they want to grow. They want to intentionally grow, and they want to see our staff on a regular basis where we can walk alongside them in, um, in um, prayer and, and Bible reading and accountability and all the aspects that make for fruitful discipleship. Discipleship is basically what I mean when I say equip. Um, and in our root there is, is Ephesians 4.12, um, to equip the saints for the minist for the work of ministry for the building of the body of Christ and um, and that's you know we equip uh, that's with prayer and scripture community we have a clear plan we actually have um, I don't have it with me today it's not an ESV but we have a um, a, a Christian standard um, E3 Bible that actually has our um, in addition to the, the text of scripture that is there, um, there's also the E3 plan. So our staff, and then as they replicate coaches who continue to replicate and multiply as they disciple other people, are able to have the, the E3 plan with them. Um, and empower, uh, that's, that's where a, a coach has been engaged and equipped, and we say, now go multiply. The Holy Spirit is indwelling. You are called through this great commission to go. And um, in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, um, and what you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And, um, and that's through modeling and assisting and watching and, and, and ultimately, uh, praise God, through launching. Um, if you, uh, uh, Mr. Joppa, could change one more. Um, so in my, uh, in my state director role, um, I'll touch on, uh, did, did this by chance skip one? Okay, this, this is, no, that's okay. I, I, I show this really in, to bring gl glory to God.
Um, this is, these are really big numbers. This is a great joy of the season that I have where I spend my days and I'm sharing with people about our ministry of, of FCA is, um, is it is joyful to share about um, what, what God has done for decades and is doing currently uh, and will do through the ministry. And so I love sharing this. In, in, in t from, from the 50s all the way to, to 2012, just 10 years back, we were focused entirely on uh, the U.S. of A. The model of what we were doing was so effective. Hundreds of thousands, millions of people are, are, are touched through FCA over those, that period of time. Um, but as I keep saying, Great Commission, and I read it already, like, it's, it says world, and it literally means, like, 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 like we're supposed to go, like, go, like, go far and wide. And um, sports are far and wide. That vehicle is useful far and wide. And so our staff said just 10 years ago, we must go. And so the way, praise God, that that has worked over the course of 10 years to add that many countries um, is that each state um, is paired with another country or countries. And so while we've been around for years, we're able to pour in with knowledge resources and financial resources when applicable and with going when applicable um, and able to, to have a, a constant dialogue going to help these newer countries basically um, to thrive when they're, you know, in some cases just up to their eyeballs in attendance, but the staffing is, you know, is still getting off the ground. And so um, just praise God for that. As you can see, those huddles, those are our Bible studies. That's globally. Um, campers, that's still a very big part of our ministry, and that's so often a, somebody, an intro for somebody to FCA, or it's, a, or it's strategically a spot where somebody's invited to that summer's camp, and that is really a springboard for them in their walk, and they come back and they understand discipleship more, and they become such a, um, a, a useful uh, attendee of a huddle back at home. Um, faith decisions, just praise God. We know we read from we read from um, from Ephesians two that we're 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 dead and it is but God. And so that's that is no boasting and that is that is all praise and in, in sharing that. And Bibles that's, that number has even ticked above two hundred thousand. And what's so exciting with sharing that is um, is I know with how our ministry works that what I've described is the very um, kind of heartbeat of what we do is that's not that this wouldn't be useful, but that's not even just like Bible for you, Bible for you. The, these are Bibles that are being given out in the context typically of a camp, in the t context of a huddle, and these are Bibles that are then used um, week to week to be um, used for evangelism and discipleship in, in, a, in this person who grows, uh, who grows uh, in God's Word from this Bible that we're able to give to them, and they're able to to, to continuously show up week to week with it. So uh, praise God for that. If you, could, if you now could uh, change back. In my state leader role, um, next snapshot is of uh, Wisconsin, but we have staff throughout the state. We have, um, we have huddles throughout the state, um, and I'll share some numbers. For context, we're, we're, not, we're not in the Bible Belt, and also even just amongst our neighboring states. We're not the biggest state. We have about 100 huddles in our state spread throughout. But praise God, that's, that, is, that is 100 strategically placed, mostly in public school, middle school, high school, and college Bible studies that are happening, um, and small group um, you know, offshoots from that. And, and so praise God for that footprint. But there is um, still much... Um, growth opportunity within our state. And so ministry growth as a state leader looks a lot like um, there are the, the individual school touches that I do have, but a lot of it has to do with um, getting staff into places that we need them. So we have right now for, for uh, context, it's in the next one, but it's um, we have 13 staff members throughout the state. We actually need about 20 more um, because when you think of what our model is, um, it's not maybe if you've been in the professional world and you think of like a like a maybe a sales rep where they might have a sales territory of like the whole state or half the state and it's because they they only see the, a business once a year, twice a year, once a quarter. These people that we see, we see them on a regular basis and we're there for the Bible study on Tuesday night and we're in the coach's office on Wednesday and a different coach's office, you know, in the same school on Thursday. And so we're dug in to where um, our staff will have 
pretty small numbers of schools assigned to them. And so it takes, uh, it takes even um, a significant number more. And so my part, um, Lord willing here, is we're building and building and growing, is finding people from uh, the local church. I'll say it's not a slide here, but how this ties in is I was asked when I came on board. So I'm the incoming state director. I'm in this role, kind of like if I was headed to another country where I go around and I spend all of my time doing um, this support raising or partner raising, um, I do I do this, and and I'm not you know the most polished with it, but I I, I share my heart of what we do, and I spend all of my time doing this, and then. Um, Lord willing, we'll be to the finish line very soon, and then um, and then it will be um, praise God, basically ministry time for for all of this time. But they, um, but I was asked to share in an initial interview. I said, was share your vision for for FCA in Wisconsin. I said, well, there's there's you'll see, there's about 550 volunteers and all of these staffers. Like I'm not, I, I'm new here. Like I'm not going to share a lot. I'm going to say for one thing, I need to listen. I need to listen, you know, start the first year and listen to all these people and what they're doing and before I'm going to prescribe anything. But but the, the piece I'm getting at is I said what I can commit to is I can commit to knowing, like like knowing. Like I know the pastor. They know me. They know what I'm about. I know what they're about. We have cell phones. We know each other. I can commit to three, a relationship with 300 pastors in our state in the first year. And I said the reason that I think that is like this mega – like visionary thing here is it not that it was you know completely something unheard of was to say if a lot of what I am you know have to do with is staff coming on board or having um, an another one is if I, I just heard of this the other day of a, um, a there was a coach in a Christian school who was a believer and was excited to have a huddle but didn't have um, anybody else with them, and it's kind of hard to have. Sometimes these huddles are up to like 80 kids um, to have just this one leader and and no support, and didn't didn't know another believer on staff in this in this high school, and I was able to tell our staff member, I was like, okay, the the good news here is that um, this my 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 thing of knowing pastors and basically every community across our state is that we're I'm able to or willing strategically be able to say, okay, I hear that you have this need in the local in the local school. Um, and we don't have enough boots on the ground of local church members that we know through the school context, I'm able to say, but I do know the pastor down the street, make that phone call and be able to help support based on people who maybe aren't a coach or aren't a teacher, but they do want to invest. And so um, and so my, my big part where I think um, that ministry growth comes from is this local church relationship like we have here and like will or willing happen um, all over the state as a as, uh, my days turn towards that. Serving the Wisconsin team, I already mentioned them, and, and then a big part of it, it's a, a long on road as the state leader f as for FCA, is to, to ensure that um, um, I, can, I know scripture and can discern and be able to see that when there's hundreds of people involved and God's word is our final authority and we have E3 and we have these, these you know, systems in place that make evangelism and discipleship, um, praise God, effective, um, there's also lots and lots of stuff going on, and so you need to have the ability to be able to see things that aren't right or speak into things that seem like they're drifting and, um, and, and, and have that weight. Um, if you could, uh, Mr. Joppa, change one more. This is a snapshot of our state. And so we have engaged. This is this is our activity. Like this is as a state leader. When we have a, when we, our staff goes out for the day, our staff goes out for the week. Like that. Those are the metrics that we're watching. We're knowing that our active staff in all parts of the state is spending their time in coach's office, spending their time in the cafe, spending their time in the house, wherever it is. But with these coaches. Um, in doing, having, having what would be in the case of engaged evangelism, seeing them regularly, presenting the gospel to them, um, and continuously doing life with them um, to continuously present uh, to them God's word and their need for him. Equipping would be, again, that discipleship relationship. So praise God, that's about 900 people in our state who are strategic, like a strategic target because under them is thousands of athletes and so these are people who are hearing uh, the truth of God's word on a regular basis from our staff in our state. Um, just, just, we're, we're excited about that. You put that all in one room, that's a huge group of people that are having one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with our staff. Um, the 13 staff members, 538 volunteers, and then our country that we 
are are invested in um, is uh, is FCA South Africa, um, and I. Um, Praise God, I've had the opportunity already in my um, short time with FCA. I came on full um, full into um, support raising or, or um, uh, the uh, fundraising aspect in November. And, and in one of my first days, I was able to connect with Christo, who lives in South Africa, but was uh, had come to America for um, actually connecting with our team and going to, to a meeting. Um, if you could, uh, Mr. Joppa, change again. This is our 10-year target. So a lot of times I say, a lot of times I don't use slides, and that's and and I get get lost, and I think maybe even more long-winded with the slides. I like to skip right to this one, and so I should I should just move it. This is our 10-year target. This is what we reverse engineer our. This is what we reverse engineer our activities of the day to work at a pace toward this. This is what we strategically plan how to get there. Um, and and ultimately, as I as I say, this is what ultimately the Lord is the one who is doing this and bringing this fruit, and He is the one who's transforming hearts and lives, not us. But this is what we're working towards by August of 2032. So if you do the math, that actually I said I started full um, in November. So this came on. This was set right before I came on, but I'm not going to change it because it's it's such a God-sized vision, so big. I I I I I, I, I want to go there. And so this is to have a mobilized volunteer. This is that person. This is sometimes the coach, sometimes the art teacher, sometimes somebody at a local church who's not actually a staffer at the school at all, but is burdened for that local community. Um, this is to have a mobilized volunteer. So they've been through a ministry leader application. They've been through E3 training. They know how to evangelize and equip. Um, they, um, and they're tied to a certified huddle. So they're leading a Bible study. That's, a mo that's what mobilized volunteer means, kind of those three together. This is to have one of those in every single high school and college in our state. Um, so if we have 100 right now, we've got 10 years to go. We've got a new leader in place. We'll have staff, Lord willing, that will have us in these, these very populated pop pockets of the state where right now we're so light on staff. Um, we, we, we are hopeful and trusting God's will in this, but very, very hopeful that we'll have much ground gained in three-year increments and in and, um, and, and our anticipating 10 years from now being able to say, look what God has done, even if it's not that. We're working at a pace for that, um, but we see this as this transformational, this 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 generational change that could come through the Lord working through a strategically placed missionary in every single community across our our state. Um, a strategic there's there's a, a yard sign I saw the other day in somebody's yard. It was by the teachers union, is what it is. But the yard the yard sign was so just it like. It hit home. It said communities connect at schools. Who knows why they said that? Whatever that, whatever their reasoning was. But I'm like, like I want that yard sign. Like, where do I get that yard sign? Because the reality is, because because that 526 means every private school, every every public school, every university, every every single high school and college in our state. That that is um, that is the reality. Is that's where. The next generation is they're in a school for the most part they're a homeschool but the vast majority are in a school one of the 526 and the the numbers are your biggest group typically on campus is the athletes and again so this is just this is a way at the small school at the big school to reach if you're going in and trying to have some sort of like common bond with people athletics is we believe the biggest one and so I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about this because um, it's what there's traction toward it's what incremental goals go toward and it's what our staff is doing every day as they chunk away at those engage equip um, activities um, then my next page is it doesn't really have a lot of words to it but mr. Joppa if you change so I'm, I'm right now asking um, for ministry partners and what I mean by that first and foremost is prayer that 526 is the number that is you know relatively easy to remember if you can remember numbers but if you can just carry that into the beauty of of that goal that is that is every single high school in Milwaukee that that sports ministry is could be so valuable for and right now our our, our impact is right now especially in the suburbs because of staffing limitations um, and and we believe that the Lord will work there if we can get there with the missionaries we it means the spots at the top of our state that are you know difficult to get to for our staff over and over again um, but we want to have staff there and so we um, if you just you know drift in your um, thinking of 526 
looks into the beauty of what that, that means with, with every single one. And then to, to, to consider as I'm here um, as a church um, uh, joining with, we're, we're not a Baptist organization, but we have a statement of faith that is, that is super solid. It's at fca.org if you want to check it out. I was almost made it a screen, but it's too long, and praise God, that's a good thing. Um, it's too long to fit on one screen, but we've got the deity of Jesus Christ. We've got the Trinity. We've got, this, this is, a, this is a, a solid statement of faith, and so I think um, as we talk about then bringing, um, you know, in-step, like-minded churches together for this strategic mission of being in the schools amongst these kids. I, I think it's um, it's very valuable. That's uh, that's what I got today. I would um, I went long. I went long. Admittedly long. Um, long is okay. All right. All right. Um, when I'm at a school, in a school setting, what I like to go because I'll I will typically skip some good chunks of that. But what I like to do is is ask people to consider we're talking we're talking here about using the vehicle of sport for reaching people but the reality is whether it's sport whether it's that you go that you're part of a you know an interest group in um, cars or um, or you know carpentry or you golf with your buddies or you're tight with your friends at work or whatever your circle is um, it doesn't have to be sport, but what I would just encourage you toward is this engage, equip, empower, this, this gospel that we pro- proclaim today. Like this, there is, there is these nuggets of, you know, if you can remember, uh, and, and, and you know the verses to it, but God loves you, sin separates you, Jesus rescues you, will you trust Jesus? Those messages are, are applicable and life-changing. The Holy Spirit does the work. You've you got to share it um, to go into wherever you're at in your circles of your friends and do this same thing. Um, I shared a nugget of where we do it. Um, I would just challenge, as this really started for me from doing this in sport um, and then FCA becoming what it looks like for me, but this can be done in your own lives um, all over. And so I, I just, I, I would encourage you to invest in others um, in that way for gospel uh, proclamation and discipleship. I'll, cl- I'll close in prayer, is that good? All right. Father, thank you for, thank you for the, the time we can spend. Thank you for giving the breath and the, um, the, the, the energy and, and uh, the means to be here today. Thank you for providing for us um, in that. Thank you for your word that was, uh, that was shared, uh, the truth um, that you, um, you are uh, both just and the justifier. And um, we... Um, we hope here as we, um, that, that there, I hope that there's encouragement toward um, evangelizing and discipling in, um, in, your own, in everyone's spheres uh, that they're in, um, investing in um, the church members around them to walk alongside of each other, um, invested in walking um, and growing in, um, in each one's relationship with uh, you alongside of each other and the encouragement that that is and the benefit that that is as the Holy Spirit works. I pray that um, that, was, um, that that was clear. And um, I thank you for, uh, for this ministry that I was able to share. And I thank you for Calvary um, Baptist Church in some prairie and the light that it is in our community, the truth um, that is shared week in and week out, that those who enter are, um, are being transformed into your um, son's likeness through the truth that is proclaimed and working in our hearts. And um, just we, we thank you for the work of the Spirit there. And as we go forward, we pray as it's, it is a uh, messy outside um, that you would uh, bring us home and, or to, and to our families with safety. And um, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. I appreciate uh, what Josh has shared this morning. Let me um, uh, have the deacons come, and while they're taking the offering, I just want to share a couple thoughts and then some announcements. You've heard the question, how do you eat an elephant? Anybody know how you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. (laughs) Go ahead, brothers. Go ahead and uh, pass the offering plate. If uh, you want to make a check out, you can make it out to W. Uh, or um, FCA, and put in the memo, uh, Josh Anderson. Um, But yeah, one bite at a time, folks. How do you reach the world? One person at a time. You know, life is hard by the yard. Um, Life is a cinch by the inch, someone once said. 
You know, when you want to connect with people, there are certain things you talk about, right? Their pets, you know, um, their children. You can connect with people right away. Oh, do you have a picture of your kids? Oh, you have, right? Um, and sports. Um, how many of you played sports at some point? Okay, high school, college, whatever. Yeah, a vast majority of you. Um, as I was listening to him, and, and let me say, sports is a huge factor in my life. I think I shared it with Josh, but God used sports to call me into the ministry. Um, and so sports means a great deal to me. Um, sports has, has really helped me in ministry with discipline in my own life and things like that, physically, uh, emotionally, and all those things. But I would say this. Um, as you think about FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which uh, my coach, Ben Peterson, um, member at Calvary Baptist Church, is, has been involved in and, and uh, has uh, volunteered in many ways. Um, but when I think about why FCA, I think of the impact of sports in our culture. A multi-billion dollar industry, right? I mean, you can go by and talk to anybody about you know, Rogers, right? Sports. It's huge, folks. And maybe you weren't involved in sports at all, but I tell you, the impact of sports in our culture is incredible. It is the God of this world. Um, the influence sports has in our communities. Um, I saw as a coach, I began getting involved. I've, I've coached here. I've coached at Maranatha. I've coached at Greendale uh, High School, um, Muhammad uh, High School in Illinois, um, other places. Um, here at Sun Prairie, I've worked over at the high school a little bit. But the impact it has, the influence it has in our community, in our homes, in their families, in their children, um, the parents, I tell you, there's thousands and thousands of parents today involved in their kids' tournaments or whatever today. It is their church, so to speak. Um, so not only the impact of sports in our culture, the influence of sports has in our community, but the importance of the Savior in our children and in our coaches. Um, what does the Bible say? Um, have them come into the church and, and, you know, preach the gospel? No. Go, go. Get out of here. Go into the world and preach the gospel. That's our mission. You know, there, this week there's going to be thousands and thousands of children grouped up in one building, and what a way to reach them. I think it's a very... Wonderful goal, having somebody, a light in each one of these places, folks. Again, if your hobby or your, your enjoyment, your connectivity is with something else, that's great. But our world is big in sports. How can we get a foot in, in their life, right? I, I think of Terry, who does guns and goes to shows. It's an avenue, right? For you, it might be something else. But listen, I would encourage you folks to pray, to give, but to volunteer, to get involved. And, and, and as I get established here in the days ahead, I want to get involved. I, I want to get into um, the schools. I want to be a, a, an athlete, um, a mentor to some athletes, and, and maybe be a source of help in some way. Maybe that's not something you can do, but you can pray for them, and you can give towards the ministry and support them, Okay. But uh, if you are an athlete, you say, well, I'm so out of shape. I haven't played sports for 30 years. That, that's not important. They just are looking for people that they can look to. And who better to look to than Christians who, who aren't, you know, drunks, drug users. They don't embarrass them with jokes that are inappropriate. They don't use bad language. They're just kind of a good person in the community. You would not believe how important you would be in this kind of a ministry. And so I know that you've already heard him speak, but I, I can't say enough good about ministries like this. 
And then to have them connecting with pastors in the community to say, hey, I got a coach. He's a Catholic, but he's real close. Would you uh, connect with him? Hey, man, th- that what, we need to start building the connectivity, right? And build this community within our public schools. And so pray for this ministry. Pray for Josh. And uh, let's see God change our world. Let's go out and get some of these kids in these public schools that, man, the world's impacting them uh, for the wrong, uh, re- in the wrong way. And so may we be a light in this dark world, all right? So just eat that elephant one bite at a time, all right? One bite at a time. Thank you, Josh, for sharing. We'll be praying for you and uh, look forward to maybe even working with you a little bit. Thank you for coming this morning. I do mean that, and I appreciate it. And uh, let's all stand for closing prayer. Uh, Again, if you uh, were not able to give this morning and would like to, uh, you certainly can do that. We'll make sure that those monies get to uh, that ministry. All right. Thank you for coming. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we close our service, we thank you that the church is not this building. The church is your people. Uh, We're so thankful to have the large body of Christ and Lord, we only function and as, as each person is actively being faithful to what you've called them to do. And so Lord, yes, we can do the things in our body that we physically would want to do without a pinky, but it sure is helpful when you have that pinky. And so Lord, may we, big or small, uh, may we be a part, a faithful part of the body. And Lord, so thankful for the larger body of Christ, Josh, and and those at Christ Fellowship. We pray for that ministry. We pray for um, the gospel witness to go forward in our community. Oh, God, we need to see our people get saved in this community. And so, God, would you convict our hearts and bring revival in our churches that we'd see lost souls saved. Lord, we think of our public schools that are full of children being indoctrinated. Oh, God, may these coaches and these athletes, and Lord, these Christians that are athletes that feel some support from a coach who's a Christian, and Lord, we're just so thankful for this ministry. We pray that you'd use it. We pray for Ben Peterson this morning, even as he speaks to a number of Pewaukee wrestlers. Lord, we pray that you would help him to share clearly the gospel, and I know he will. And Lord, that your light would continue to shine forth in this dark world that we live in. Father, we love you. Lord, we need your strength. Help us to walk in your spirit today. And Lord, help us to love you and love others. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Have a wonderful day.